We've been full-time RVers for four years and we're going to share our top 10 favorite campgrounds. And one we will never go back to. <laughs> Hi, I'm Paul and welcome to the channel. And I'm Liz and we have a really good video for you today because we have been full-time RVers for four years and the number one question we get asked is what? What's your favorite place that you've been to? We're going to answer that and give you the top 10. In our almost four years of full-time RVing, we have been to nearly 200 different places. We're going to share not only our top 10, but one that we will never go back to. Yeah, there's one that, that uh, is just high on the list of just <laughs> I don't ever want to go back to. Never, never. When we go through our list, we're going to tell you why we like them. And we're also going to give you a caveat as to what might be a downside for you. And we'll also tell you, you know, how long we stayed and that sort of thing. So you ready to get started? Yeah, let's get going. And we're going to go in reverse order. We're going to go 10 down to 1, and mm -hmm. then we will share with you the one we're never going back to. So number 10 is Little Diamond Campground in Newport, Washington. It's just north of Spokane. About and 35 miles. Little Diamond is a thousand trails and KOA resort. It has 360 acres. It's a very nice campground. The sites are pretty level. It's wooded, and there's also a lake, so you can go fishing, you can go kayaking, canoeing, right. any non motor Diamond Lake, which is just down the street, maybe five minutes, is 750 acres, and that's where you're going to do your motorized boating. At Little Diamond, there's a pool, clubhouse, store, I mean, pretty much anything you need. Plus, Newport, Washington is about 10 minutes up the road. It's, it's close by. Right, and then we found some good sightseeing. We drove around. There's lots of parks and hiking and lakes and rivers, so there's definitely a lot to see and do in the area. We've stayed two or three times at this campground. Uh, the last time was kind of unfortunate. We lost two e-bikes, but that was, you know, it was partially my fault. I didn't lock them on the rack and somebody came while we were gone or maybe in the middle of the night. I'm not, we're not sure. Somebody came and took the bikes off the rack and, and uh, they were gone. So the only caveat we would say on this campground is to lock your stuff, but we think that's pretty much anywhere these days. Yeah. You need to keep your stuff locked. Anymore, unfortunately, you have to lock everything if you want to keep it. Um, <laughs> Particularly e-bikes because they're, yeah, they're hot. Yeah, they're hot right now. Little Diamond is part of our Thousand Trails membership. We'll have more information right here. Number nine is the Kentucky Horse Park in Lexington, Kentucky. It is adjacent to the Kentucky Horse Park itself, which is a 1,200-acre as the name implies, horse park. They do equestrian <laughs> events, and you're better at that at saying yeah, what they do. Yeah, because I'm actually from Lexington, and this is in the heart of bluegrass country. It's basically you're set in Kentucky farm country. The horse park campground has a pool and a store and other amenities, but next door you can walk over to the actual horse park and do some fishing. It is on a bike trail. It's called the Legacy Bike Trail that we have biked down. You can bike through farms, but if you keep going about a dozen miles you'll be downtown Lexington we bike to the farmers market yes we did on a Saturday uh, morning we took it took our bikes to the farmers market the last mile or so is on city streets but there is a bike lane I never felt like I was in any kind of danger as with any large city there's lots of great restaurants there's the bourbon tour if you sign up in advance to get into some of the more popular breweries you can get into them and do a tour of their facility distilleries yeah bourbon distilleries is a really hot tourist thing to do so we do recommend that you book early for that and it's just a great way to yeah. get the kentucky feel now we have stayed twice at that campground each time for four weeks the caveat. <laughs> Why don't you talk about the caveat for the horse park? Yeah, the horse park is going to test your backing skills. The pads that they have for the for your camper are just wide enough for the camper. There is very little room for error. So, so like I said, it's going to test your backing skills. Now, all of the campsites except one are back in, and they're back in at a 90 degree angle from the road. So yeah. you need to be a pro at backing. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Sometimes. You know, the uh, entertainment in campgrounds is put out your, your lawn chair and watch people backing in. It's, it can be very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> that campground is the place to do it. Number eight on our list is Idlewild RV Resort in California. 
I fell in love with it so much, I actually changed that to my address on Facebook. <laughs> I think the first week we were there, she had it as her new residence. <laughs> so it is in Idlewild, California, and it's on 200 acres set in the 14,000 acre state park in the San Jacinto Mountains. Now you can hike out your back door. There's actually hiking all over the place because you can go from that campground into the state park. You're camping on a mountaintop. If you're familiar with California at all, it's along the same mountain range that goes into Palm Springs, Palm Desert, and there is actually a hike. If you're a hardcore hiker, there is a hike that can take you pretty much from the campground to the Palm Springs aerial tramway to where it goes when it goes up. It is a long hike though. Like I said, you better be a hardcore hiker if you're gonna try that one. Well, there's lots of hardcore hiking in that area. I mean, there's beautiful parks and, and many hiking areas. Yeah. So you will not run out of hiking at all. Yeah, Takwitz Rock, Suicide Rock. I the, went up Black Mountain with my mountain bike. It's great mountain biking. I mean, mm -hmm. just a lot to do. Yep. There's a lake there for fishing. The Idlewild RV Resort has a store, cafe, pool. It's just 10 minutes to the village, which has your basic groceries and a hardware store, that sort of thing. We've stayed there for a month. Mm -hmm. We originally had, a, I think, a 10-day reservation, and we loved it so much that we, we decided... Extended. Now, we also got snowed in there. We were in there, <laughs> we were up there in November, and we knew that the storm was coming. And we went to the store and, and stocked up so we wouldn't run out of anything. But yeah, we seriously got snowed in. I mean, I went out to start the truck after the storm moved over and it was so cold that it wouldn't start. And I hadn't plugged in the block heater. So I did that and as soon as it warmed up, it started up fine. It was 16 degrees, so it was so peaceful. It was mountaineer and it was just beautiful and still one of my very favorite places. The downsides or the caveats that we have for Auto Wild are don't go if, in snow weather if you don't want to do snow camping, right. but know that it is on the top of a mountain. So you have a, what, 20 mile curvy road up to the top. Yeah, it's, it's unrelenting. It's 20 miles plus of unrelenting uphill to get there from the town that you come from generally is, is Banning, California, or if you're coming from the other side is Hemet. So if you don't like steep, curvy, windy mountain roads, this may not be the campground for you. And we don't believe it's big rig friendly. If you've got a 40 foot rig, ours is 35 and we had a little bit of an issue there. So that's the other thing. There are some more accessible areas of the campground. For us, it was our first time there. We didn't know the campground at all. The ranger sent us to his section for smaller rigs because yeah. he just wasn't paying attention that we had a bigger rig. Yeah, yeah. So be very careful if you go to Idlewild to make sure before you go down a road that your rig will go down that road. Yeah, you might even want to send somebody out in front of you on a bicycle or if you have a toad, you know, drive around the campground a little bit to see. Number seven is Swanee River Rendezvous. It is in Mayo, Florida, just like mayonnaise, but without the <laughs> nays. <laughs> in fact, for an April Fool's joke, they changed their name for one day to Miracle Whip. And, uh, but anyway, the campground is, is like a campground from your childhood. It, it just has that feel to it. And when we got there, as we were driving in, we knew we had hit a home run because as you're driving in there's a little booth there that is not manned by a human but there's a little stuffed dalmatian that gets up and wags its tail as you <laughs> as you come in they have a bowling alley that they've made out of plywood they have pigeon races on the weekend what else they have oh, chicken so poop bingo there's so much it is a 40 acre campground on swanee river and they have canoes and kayaks and they'll actually take you up river so you don't have to do any of the hard work and you just kind of float and paddle down mm -hmm. but they definitely they do they have that nostalgic feeling of you know it's the campground of your youth with all the fun and games and their attitude i mean they have a snack bar they have a store a cafe there's a swimming hole that's a natural spring there is a regular pool as well hot tub the bowling you were talking about they called it redneck bowling redneck bowling yes <laughs> I was trying to think of that, what they called it but that's it so we stayed there twice for a total of two weeks it is just charming it's yeah, really sweet yeah. 
So what is the caveat on this campground? Well, it's a good ways from town. It's probably 40 minutes to drive into the next biggest town. So if you're going to get groceries, get them on your way in. Number six is Heart Ranch RV Resort in Rapid City, South Dakota. It has 480 sites on 195 acres. It's a very well-run campground with tons of amenities, right? Yeah. It's got a pool, hot tub, clubhouse, restaurant, mini golf, gas station even. There's a bike trail where you can bike a little ways mm -hmm. uh, outside of there. I think another reason to go there is location. You are so close to Mount Rushmore, Custer, Hill City. There's so much to do. We've stayed there twice for a total of two weeks, right? right. So the downside of Heart Ranch is that it feels a little too planned maybe. If you're looking for rustic camping, this is not the place for you. It's very planned. It sort of has an HOA feel about it. Yeah, yeah, like if you break a rule, they're gonna be right on top of you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've never had that situation, no. <laughs> but we do feel that it's very, very well run. Number five is Nashville KOA. And if you're a country music fan and you're gonna visit Nashville, this is a great place to use as your base. It's close to Opryland. The Grand Old Opry actually is only three miles away. You're close to everything. Uh, there's also a great auto museum there, which if you're a longtime viewer of this channel, you know that I'm into cars. If you're in Nashville, don't miss the Lane Motor Museum. That was a lot of fun. Now the campground itself has the most amenities we have ever seen. Okay, first of all, you can get very fancy sites even with your own private dog pen. They have events like live music, wine tasting, they have a snack bar, a pool, a hot tub, game room. They have oversized outside games like giant chess and Jenga. They have this big jumping pillow. The thing that I think is the best thing about the Nashville KOA is that you don't have to leave. If you're a family and you're traveling, there's enough for everyone to be entertained. It's, it's an attraction in itself. You wouldn't have to leave. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure if you're going to Nashville, you're gonna to wanna to see the Music City area, so. And, and in all the wonderful restaurants, but you can also plan a day of not going anywhere and know that the kids will be totally entertained. Oh yeah, the kids will be fine. At the Nashville KOA, we've actually stayed there just three nights. Yeah, we were only there very briefly. I want to go back because there's places that I didn't see. I mean, three days is not enough time to see Nashville. Now, the caveat of the Nashville KOA is what? It's a little noisy. It's right off the interstate, so you're going to get some vehicle traffic noise. That's about it. Yeah, you're close to everything, so that's the price you pay. Number four is Rancho Oso in Santa Barbara, California. This is another Thousand Trails campground as part of our membership. It's 310 acres surrounded by the Los Padres National Forest. We're talking endless hiking and mountain biking. And it looks like a movie set because there's a horse ranch on the campground. Yep. With covered wagons that you can stay in, as a matter of fact. It's got everything. It's got a store. It's got a, a restaurant. Little cafe more than a restaurant. It's got a pool and a hot tub. Mm -hmm. Just looking at the beautiful surroundings, like looking at the horses, and you can go for a horseback ride. I mean, mm -hmm. it is, It's. it feels like, I think this has the best of city country. Like, you know, you're, you have Santa Barbara 30 minutes away and everything that the city has to offer, but you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere. It's also very close to the Central Valley wine country. You don't have to go up to Napa to, to do wine tasting in California. You, you can taste wine in the Central Valley, which is where this is. We stayed there two to three times for a total of eight weeks. <laughs> yep. When I left my sticks and bricks house, Rancho Oso was my very first campground. Mm -hmm. It's one of my very favorites. That's why we have it at number four. I mean, it, it has a lot, but it's not perfect. So what doesn't it have? The one thing it's missing is internet. I found out the hard way that there is no internet there. You uh, can drive a half mile out of the campground to something they call Verizon Point, and you can get one or two bars. But since we've been there, Starlink came out, and if you have used Starlink there and it works, let us know. Yeah, tell us in the comments if Starlink works in, in Rancho Oso. We're kind of anxious to find that out. Number three is Nashonic Lakeside Campground in West Salem, Wisconsin. It is a really a nice family campground. I can't say enough good things about this place. As the name implies, it's right on Nashonic Lake. You can take your boat and drop it in the lake and, and 
spend a day on the lake. It has a store, a pool, a hot tub. We really like the family vibe. They even had a golf cart parade while we were there. Mm -hmm. Just seemed like there was just a lot to do. There's beautiful water views. It's close to town. It checked every box because yeah. what was just down the street? There's a couple of places right near there. One's Linda's Bakery, which is maybe a mile away. You could probably put on 10 pounds in a weekend if you go to Linda's Bakery. And then there's another farmer's market, farm stand actually. It's not a farmer's market, it's more of a farm stand where you can go in and get fresh produce. I mean, literally right out of the field behind this place. It's not too far from La Crosse, Wisconsin. And in La Crosse is a auto dealer that has converted one of his showrooms into a little auto museum. I spent a couple hours there one day. We did a video on it, as a matter of fact. Also that was nearby was bike trails. We've had three good bike trails. One was the Sparta Elroy Trail, which is the very first rails to trail ever in the country. We stayed at Mashonic for two weeks. This is part of our trails collection membership. And the only downside to this campground is what? I mean, because it checks all the boxes. Well, it's hard to get into. You have to book way in advance to get a spot in this place. It's that popular. Our number two favorite campground is Lake Five Resort in West Glacier, Montana, right outside of Glacier National Park. In fact, you're only three miles from it, and you can even bike on bike path the whole way pretty much in, yeah. into glacier so that's a huge thing the campground itself is not your typical campground it's really rustic camping the campground's right on a lake and there's stand-up paddle boarding and kayaking canoeing that kind of thing mm -hmm. but there's not like the pool the hot tub at this campground if you want that there are other campgrounds like the koa across the street what we like about this campground is that it's peaceful it, it brought me back to you know 50 years ago and the old style of camping i mean it was just absolutely beautiful you can enjoy the lake there's a little beach and nearby is whitefish i think that's about 30 miles away the yeah. town of whitefish yeah. Whitefish is one of the touristy towns in that area. It lives up to the hype. It's a great town. Great yeah. restaurants. We went to a, an old saloon restaurant thing there. I can't remember the name of it, but we actually went there twice. It was so good. Outside of Glacier National Park, which will give you tons of stuff to do, there's also a dam and recreational area, Hungry Horse Dam, with lots of stuff to do. We had neighbors that spent a day there, and it's on a lake with lots of hiking. The downside of this camp ground is that it is, is very rustic. It's almost no amenities. They do have a small little store, but you're close to markets if you need anything. Because West Glacier Village is right there, so all yeah. the things that yeah. you would need would be right there. All right, now we're down to number one. Here's the drum roll. Here we go. Number one is Chesapeake Bay Campground in Virginia. It checks all the boxes. Well, let me say that we pulled in there. We were going to be there for a week. Mm -hmm. We extended our reservation to four weeks. This is another Thousand Trails campground. We used our Thousand Trails membership to stay there. So this campground is 280 acres. It's right on the Piankatank River. You can put your boat in and, and spend the day on the water. You can fish, you can crab. You can go crabbing right from the dock. And actually the river looks more like a bay because we're at the mouth of the Chesapeake yeah. Bay. Yes. The campground has everything so everything that you've ever wanted is pretty much there you've got the pool huge hot tub there is a mini golf there's a store you can get ice cream a big rec center that where they do bingo nights i think on was it friday night friday night friday we were night doing bingo. candy bar bingo yes candy bar bingo you go, <laughs> yes you go with a candy bar and somebody wins you know the pot yeah there's also a game room for the kids and the teens just mm -hmm. you know just doing games gosh i mean there was a couple little lakes besides the river there were maybe two or three lakes where you could just go fishing mm -hmm. or just enjoy the view there's a gloucester which is the, the town that it's in you have to drive a little ways to get into the to the old village of gloucester but it's got an interesting downtown where they've got um a little walled village yeah a little village with the old jail and the old uh, courthouse and a little interpretive center where they tell you about the area it's great fun the downside is there are actually two it's 25 minutes to the grocery store which may not be that big of a deal but the roads are very narrow and windy. We do mm. not recommend going to Chesapeake Bay in the dark if you've yeah. got a big rig. Yeah, as, as we were driving in, it was 
daylight. Liz was actually driving that day. She was almost in tears. It was it was so narrow and she was so nervous about it. No shoulder. When cars or trucks pass you going the other way, I mean there's inches to spare. <laughs> it, it can be white knuckle driving so we do not recommend you get you arrive there after dark unless you're really familiar with the road. But once you're there, you'll never want to leave. Everything is right there. I mean, it truly is just a great campground. So we love Chesapeake Bay. So now we're ready to talk about our least favorite campground. And we stayed there probably nine days, but it felt like nine months, right? <laughs> yeah, we left early, actually. We did, that's we right. We left early. We don't want to keep you in suspense. The campground is the Thousand Trails campground in Las Vegas. It's city camping yeah. at its best worst. At its, at its worst. At its worst. Yeah, city yeah. camping at its worst. You're directly under the runway final approach. For McCarran. Yeah, yeah. McCarran Airport, the, the airport that feeds Las Vegas. Very noisy. The campsites are very tight. You couldn't put your awning out because your neighbor is right there. Right. We had the 260 when we were there mm -hmm. and we barely got the 260 into the spot and by barely I mean we could barely open our slides and forget about the awnings they were not going to get open there was just a few trees there was no grass hardly in the entire campground well, I mean, of course it's, it's desert it's Vegas so I wouldn't expect yeah, grass but, but it wasn't like greenery or like oh, I'm away from it all this campground would be ideal for who somebody that likes visiting Las Vegas I mean it's it puts you in the city you're not too far from the strip the casinos that are close by are not the high-end casinos. You'd have to drive a couple miles to get to the really big fancy well, casinos. Didn't you say, because I don't really know Vegas, but didn't you say it's not even the good part of Vegas? Oh, it's not. In? No, it's right on the edge of the bad part, the bad part of Las Vegas. <laughs> if you're familiar with Vegas, the campground is on Boulder Highway and Desert Inn. When we arrived there, just within moments of us arriving, there was a shooting out on Boulder Highway. The suspect ran into the campground. <laughs> they spent hours looking for him in the campground. And, and the helicopters were circling above for hours, you know, trying to find him. So yeah. that added to our, our pleasant experience. There are people that love that campground. We had a neighbor who was a year-round resident of the campground, so she just loved Vegas. Mm -hmm. So it just wasn't for us. So tell us in the comments section what your favorite campgrounds are. We'd love to know, and we'll see you in the next video. See you then.